Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey guys, Michael Sherlock here on behalf of Chris Perillo from youtube.com slash locker gnome. In this video, I'm going to give you the inside information on iMovie's picture-in-picture -picture effect. Now the first thing you need to do is actually activate this feature by going to iMovie Preferences and making sure that Show Advanced Tools is selected. Now you can picture in picture two things, either images or video. Images just lack an audio feature, so I don't really need to show you that. Just take some video from your event library and drag it into your project, selecting picture in picture. From there, you can adjust its orientation. What I like to do is add it to the corner and then drag it out to the edge of my shoulders. That way, you'll be getting a really good grasp of whatever I'm showing you, but you'll still be able to see me and my interactions with the audience. From there, you can go to Clip Adjustments, and you can change the video effect. So let's say, instead of it just being none, maybe you wanted to flip it, add a romantic effect, put it in black and white, or change it to x-ray, among many other video choices. You can also adjust the speed, so if you want it to play slower, you can drag it to the left, or quicker, drag it to the right. In fact, you can also slow it down and play it in reverse if you really want to. Now, picture-in-picture -picture effect is really important, because I don't like the way it just cuts in automatically. I like to add a transition, so I select Dissolve. You can also choose Zoom or Swap, but I think Dissolve is the best choice. You can also change the length of the transition depending on the effect you're trying to get from it. Finally, you can change the border from a dashed line all the way up to a thick line with either a black, gray, or white outline. From the video tab, you can adjust the exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. just to make your image, or in this case video, look a little bit different than it originally did. I don't like to mess around with this too much, but there's never a problem with maybe boosting the saturation just a little bit to make something look a little bit more vivid. In fact, sometimes for a little project I was working on, I changed the red gain all the way up to max just so the clip looked a little bit more red, symbolizing a little bit of evil and corruption. So you can mess around with that in whatever way you want to. With a little video file like this, there is some audio. So let's say you wanted to increase the volume of that or lower it, you could do that. But also ducking, which is really important, and I think this is the biggest feature of the audio tab. Essentially, this clip, for instance, is a Need for Speed Shift video clip that I took for my review. Now, it has some noise from the cars moving and so on and so forth, but I don't necessarily want that to be louder than my voice. So instead of messing around with the volume, what I like to do is just go to ducking. That way, when I'm speaking, it'll get lower to whatever level you select here, and that way, you can still hear the cars in the background, but you can also clearly hear what I'm saying. Now fade in and out, this is just a transition for the audio. What I like to do sometimes is just leave fade in the same. I just usually leave that at automatic. But if you're trying to make it a more dramatic exit, you can change the manual fade out and make it longer, up to five seconds, to make it more dramatic as maybe an audio clip is ending, so on and so forth. I think it's really useful. Now you also have some options with cropping and rotation. Just go down here, click crop and rotate. You can easily adjust the way your video looks. Now you have the same choices with an image, again without the audio tab, which makes sense because images don't have audio attached to them. But adding some pictures to your videos is truly an important thing that makes the content you're creating just a little bit more powerful. Because talking in front of a camera is one thing, but being able to put a little picture of what you're talking about to the left or the right of you really adds a little bit of oomph to your video. So again, I'm Michael Sherlock from youtube.com slash the revived one on behalf of Chris Perillo from youtube.com slash locker gnome. I hope you enjoyed this picture in picture effect tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a good day.